Okay, so I, everybody's familiar, I mean, I'm representing a riding in British Columbia called Saanich Gulf Islands. I need you to know that I held town hall meetings through my riding through January. Eight different town hall meetings for MP accountability in each part of the riding. And the number one issue my constituents want me to take on is to stop the super tankers. Unfortunately, this is the number one issue I want to take on. But I mean, my, my community and British Columbians in general are terribly alarmed by the fact that Stephen Harper has announced, he announced to Beijing, in Beijing, in China, he said, don't worry, we will build that pipeline, we will have those super tankers. So I now call the, what Enbridge likes to call the Northern Gateway Pipeline, because it's not about a, it's not actually about the name of the pipeline, it's all about the marketing, to come up with a name that people, every time we say that word, we are promoting their pipeline. So from, it's the Great Pipeline of China project. <laughs> and, <laughs> Great pipeline in China leads to really dangerous super tankers. And there's a lot of ways to go at this issue. I've, if you go to my MP website, you will find uh, that my householder to my constituents this month is, I don't know if you know what a householder is, but you get a message from you, you get a mail from your MP, it comes from free, for free from the government of Canada, it usually shows your MP cutting ribbons or uh, putting a shovel in the ground or waving at people. So um, my current householder of my MPs is, is a citizen's primer on pipelines, tankers, and energy policy. And it points out all the reasons we shouldn't allow this great pipeline of China to be built. Uh, of course, it, it's expansion of the oil sands, which we want to not expand. <laughs> it also is an economic argument that why are we shipping bitumen crude out of Canada instead of refining it within Canada. There's also points that I raise in the, in the arguments that I think you'll find useful that Ontario, Quebec, uh, get uh, most of the oil that we use from Angola, Nigeria, Venezuela, Saudi Arabia, Norway, Kazakhstan, and all the Atlantic provinces are 100% dependent on that oil. So Canada overall, for as much as Stephen Harper wants to describe us as an energy superpower, and he also wants to frame this discussion as we want to open markets to China to sell Canadian goods, that's not what's going on here. We're becoming a resource-based colony for China. It's their oil. They want it to get to their refineries. They don't, it's not our oil that could go to our refineries. This is a very substantial change geopolitically. And it's obviously, it's not all Chinese oil, but China managed to get itself a seat on the board of Syncrude. Syncrude produces 20% of the oil out of the oil sands. And for a 9% stake in Syncrude, Sinopec, which is owned and operated by the government of Beijing, a government of China in Beijing, gets to say, you don't process that crude here, we're shipping it to China. So we have some very large political questions at stake about Canadian sovereignty, Canadian national interest, and the co constant repetition by Joe Oliver and Stephen Harper and Peter Kent and all of them that building that pipeline and sending those super tankers out in violation of a moratorium against oil tankers on the BC coast that's been in place for 40 years. They're acting like it doesn't exist. And the reason it was put there is that the waters off of Kitimat and around Haida Gwaii are not just a bit tricky. They're the most treacherous waters on the planet. They want to be charting a super tanker the size of the Empire State Building through that water. No way in hell are they going to build their great pipeline and launch their super tankers. And that's why we have to stop them. And I appreciate your raising the issue. It is a, an absolutely essential issue. And I'm very concerned that Stephen Harper is going to come to the House of Commons with a budget that, that further destroys and erodes our environmental assessment process, that goes after those of us who oppose that pipeline, calling us radicals or enemies or against Canada. They actually on the floor of the House of Commons said if you were against this project, you were against Canada. And when asked to apologize for that remark, they repeated it. So uh, we have to be on, we have to be very, very aware of the fact that as long, you know, and by the way, I haven't told you the good news. Uh, I forgot to tell you. I forgot to tell them. I want to get rid of Stephen Harper this year. I don't want to wait for him. <laughs> George to Ottawa with me. It's, it's, it's not, it's, it's perfectly legal 
and democratic to make sure that Canadians understand we did not elect a prime minister. We elected 308 MPs. The current prime minister is unfit to be prime minister of this country, and we should drive him out of office before the next election. We still have a conservative majority. They would pick a different person to be leader. Okay, as I said, other than Vic Taves, I can't get anything worse. Thank you.